by any means necessary. What is that about? You know, when I was going to high school, they showed us videos or movies on how evil the whole Nazi thing was and the Holocaust and all these things. Well, they're not even showing that anymore to these kids. They're not showing it. And it's obvious because of how these kids are protesting right now. They don't know the truth. But we're going to look at the truth right now in this video. <laughs> By any means necessary, they're claiming, proclaiming. And even Greta herself, who was all about just the climate, now she's all about this movement. And, she, and they're basically protesting saying, you know, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, which means let's just wipe Israel off of the map, which is totally evil. And and they're saying it'll happen again thousands and ten thousands of times. October 7th is what they're referring to. How dare they be involved in this? So it's really not about climate change. It's all politics. She was basically saying again, and Netanyahu and Israel are saying never again. And I'm with them on that by any means necessary. Wow, what does that mean? You means you guys wanna have you know extermination camps again? Is that what it's about? So here's the founder of Palestine right here, you guys, because Palestine was just the name that the Romans gave to the land of Judea, that's what it was called before that, and Israel, and they gave it this name Palestine just to be insulting to the Jewish people because they hated the Jewish people so much because it was off of what the what was called the Philistines, right, which were non-existent anymore, but they were, through history, the enemies of Israel. So they came up with this name Palestine just to to get on the nerves and to to uh, to mock the Jewish people. Well. That's what the land was called from 136 AD when Hadrian, the Roman emperor, the evil emperor, did that. And he sold all the many of the Jewish people as slaves and spread them throughout the land. He was trying to wipe Israel off of the map. And then later on, when Hitler was coming into power, this guy right here, he was the founder of the modern day Palestine, right? He was friends with Hitler, the most evil man of our time, this horrible, horrible anti-Semitic man, Hitler. And he was here with him. You could see a picture of him together right here. And he is the, in charge of and, and what started because of him. All of this is happening right now, this whole Hamas thing and all this stuff. So it was Hitler and Al Husseini, Al Husseini right here together talking about how they can exterminate the Jewish people. In fact, they were planning right here. They were planning on how do they can exterminate the Jewish people in the Middle East during that time. And Hitler was very interested in that, of course, right? And well, it's the same thing today. And you guys want to join in on these pro Hamas uh, protests? How dare you? I say, how dare you, Greta, on this? You say, how dare you to people about climate, so called climate change? How dare you on this? Here's a picture of a poor young Jewish boy uh, taken to a concentration camp back in the World War II time, 1940s, just in 30s. It was a horrible thing. But Israel will stand. Israel will not give up. And God has his hand of protection around her. How do I know that? Because the scriptures say it. Look at this. Isaiah 61. Jesus read from this scroll in his hometown synagogue of Nazareth. And this is what he read. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord anointed me to bring good news to the humble. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim release to the captives and freedom to prisoners to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. And Jesus stopped right there at a comma, and he rolled up the scroll, handed it back to the attendant, sat down, all the eyes were fixed upon him, and he said, today in your hearing, these scriptures are fulfilled. But he stopped at a comma. What does the rest of it say in this amazing scroll of Isaiah? Well, let's check it out. Here it is. Here's what the rest of it says right here. And the day of vengeance of our God, the day of vengeance. That doesn't sound like meek and mild and, and humble Jesus. Well, he came the first time meek and mild and humble and with, with a wide open door for anybody who would like to receive Jesus and be saved. Just like Noah had the 
open door as he was preparing this place, right, for a hundred years. And he was preaching to the people to repent, to turn to God, and they refused to do so. And then what happened? Noah and his seven family members went into the ark, just like Jesus and the church will do that. It's called the rapture. And the door was shut. It was no longer open. It was shut. God shut it. And then what happened? Judgment came for everyone on the entire face of the earth while the ark was floating above the earth, which speaks of Jesus' second coming because we're going to meet him in the clouds and we'll be in that place that he prepared above the earth until that seven-year time of tribulation period is over and then we come down into Jerusalem to be with Jesus forever and ever. So that's what we're seeing here, you guys. And it's going to be a day of vengeance. God said it right here and the day of vengeance of our God. And then what else does it say? To comfort all who mourn, to grant those who mourn in Zion, where Zion, Israel. Zion speaks of Israel. In fact, a lot of Christians today hate that word. They hate Zionism. People in the world, the globalists, they hate Zionism. But even some Christians don't like that word either. And that's wrong. God still has them, Zion, as the apple of his eye, the very pupil of his eye. Are you going to poke God's eye? Is that what you're going to do? I don't care if you're a pastor, and I don't care what your education level is like either, because God doesn't care about that. He cares about what his word says and, and whether or not we will follow that and follow him. So that's what we're seeing here, guys. He will comfort all those who mourn in Zion. Zion, yes, <laughs> giving them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning. This is what God says. The cloak of praise instead of a disheartened spirit. In other words, he's going to give them clothing of righteousness. They're going to be clothed in Jesus' righteousness someday when they turn to him, the nation of Israel. God speaks much about it. It's going to happen, you guys. It's all through the word of God. In fact, you could even see it in Joseph's story. And you could see how he saves Israel even after he has a Gentile bride. He's in the Gentile land. But during that seven-year time of trouble, what happens? Israel comes back to him, reveals that he's alive to them, and he saves them. In fact, you could see it in this playlist right here, How to Find Jesus in the Old Testament. Check out the Joseph episodes. I think there's like 17 of them, but click on this playlist right here and check it out. And don't forget to subscribe as well, my friend.